Hey, what's up everyone? Jonathan Allen at Floodwater Studios. Today we're going to take a look at two separately recorded acoustic guitar tracks and see if you can spot the difference. Let's hop into it. At Floodwater Studios, we want to help you utilize the space that you have to create the music that you want. Home studios are so versatile and gear is so affordable, you can now achieve your goals faster than ever. So if you're ready to take the next step, head to floodwaterstudios.com slash home studio, grab our free home studio equipment guide with personal recommendations and any price point to help you on your home studio journey today. But Sunday, we were in the studio and we were working on a new tune here and we were recording acoustics. So let's go ahead and hop into studio one and let's take a look. So this is the session that we have. You know, it was, for this particular song, it was more so writing while we were recording. And I don't always recommend that, but sometimes that's amazing how creativity can start flowing when you have a general idea for something and you're sitting there and you're kind of just noodling around and then you start a little bit of collaboration with someone else and then everything starts clicking, clicking, clicking and then you have a whole tune out of something. This is kind of what happened here. Eli had a bass idea for something. He had the intro guitar part. He had the chorus and then we kind of just built the rest of the song off of that. Now, we have only recorded so far acoustic and bass but we have pretty much a general idea for everything else that's kind of going into this but let's focus just on the acoustics here. So we have three acoustic tracks. We have an acoustic mono. We have an acoustic left and an acoustic right. So we have left and right and then one straight up the middle. Let's take a listen to the first track here. So the mono acoustic. And I have kind of the, um, the chorus part on loop so we can listen to that so this is what the mono acoustic sounds like so that's the mono acoustic sounds pretty good it's clean it's tight um, I have a little bit of EQ on here, like I've shown in the past how I do my acoustic guitar EQs. A couple small cuts, a little boost in the high end to get some presence and some clarity for everything. But there's not a whole lot going here. So we've done a little bit. And then the other two guitars I actually recorded in stereo. So it's still technically one guitar part that was played, but... Two microphones, split them hard left and right to get the stereo width. So let's take a listen to those real quick here. Now, the interesting thing with these guitars is the way that I recorded the stereo acoustics is I have two pencil condensers, small diaphragm, and I have them set up on X and Y. Now, the weird thing is, if we zoom in here, we can see that these two guitars, they're in phase. So we're not having any phasing issues happening between the stereo pair on the acoustic recordings. But if we look at the mono guitar, how the mono guitar was recorded, we have some phasing issues. Let me close some of this stuff so we can see it a little better. Oh, zoomed in a little too far here. 
So we have phasing issues from how the mono guitar was recorded and how the stereo guitars were recorded. So as you can see, if you don't know what phasing is, essentially we have the mono acoustic waveform is going up, but it's going down on the stereo guitars. So they're starting to cancel each other out a little bit. So I was messing around with some things and I actually flipped the polarity on one of the stereo guitars and it made it crazy good for whatever reason. I'm not sure exactly why, but what we did here, because I did try to flip the polarity on the mono acoustic, which you would think since that's the one that's out of phase, it would kind of fix everything. But let's listen to everything together here. So the three, the three guitars, or technically two guitars, but the three tracks for everything. And let's see, let's, let's flip polarities here and you be the judge of what you think sounds better. So I'm not sure about you, but for whatever reason, when I flip the polarity on one of the stereo acoustics, it widens everything up beautifully. It sounds full and lush and huge, and I absolutely love it. Now, I did say we wanted to try and spot the difference between how they were kind of recorded here. And if anybody has thought about what the answer may be. Before we keep, uh, keep going, go ahead and put your guess down in the comments here what you think the difference between the three uh, recordings are. So we have the mono acoustic and then the stereo recorded acoustic. So go ahead and lock in your votes down in the comment section. But here is the difference. The mono acoustic actually was a direct input from the guitar. So there was no microphone involved. Um, you can kind of hear the difference on direct recording as opposed to using a microphone and picking up the instrument in the room itself. So it doesn't sound horrible. Uh, I, you know, sometimes you have to do direct uh, recording. It's just, that's how it works out sometimes. But I mean, it was really hot up in the studio. We're up in the attic of my house. So when we record with a microphone, we have to turn the air conditioner off uh, so we don't get that noise. And during the summer months, uh, try to plan that out according to weather the best that we can. Uh, but when we first recorded this, we did the direct um, just quarter inch out of the guitar into the focus right here. So if you listen, you don't hear a lot of overtones from the guitar. You're not hearing a lot of the body of the guitar. It's just whatever pickup is inside the guitar itself. But if you listen to the mic'd guitars, um, so the stereo guitar that we recorded here, you can hear that difference with the richness of the guitar itself, the beauty of the instrument, the overtones, the room that's coming into play for everything. Just listen to that difference. You're starting to get the pick noise for everything, which Sometimes, yeah, you can get too much pick noise and things, but it really brings the character in the performance. Uh, so if you're watching somebody play a live show, sure, a lot of times they're 
plug directly into a PA system to amplify the acoustic. Um, some shows, you know, mic guitars, that's obviously an option as well. But a lot of times you're hearing the plugged in acoustic to a PA system, which essentially is what we got in the mono acoustic on this. Um, so you're not hearing a lot of nuances for the instrument. Now, when you're listening live on an acoustic instrument, you can hear that in the room itself with everything else that's kind of going on, especially if you're in more of an intimate setting or venue. Um, obviously, if you're in a stadium and someone's playing an acoustic, if you're not right on stage or right in front of the stage you're not going to hear that instrument a lot of times with larger venues you're just not going to hear the instrument regardless just because of how loud everything is but you don't get a lot of nuance as you would when you're miking a, a guitar so i always recommend if you can mic up your guitars now it takes a little extra work and it can be finicky absolutely it can be finicky but the reward is amazing. The, the payoff for what you're getting is great. But when we put all three of these together, it still sounds really good to have the direct acoustic and then the stereo recorded. Just kind of blending all three of them together, all three tracks. I could listen to that pretty much all day. I absolutely love the way that that sounds as a recording in itself. And then, hey, you throw the bass in there, and you know what? It starts to sound really nice and rich and full. But what do you guys think? Do you normally record your acoustics direct input through quarter inch or even XLR? Some acoustics have an XLR output on them. So do you record direct or do you like to mic your acoustics? So I would definitely challenge if you normally only record direct, give it a shot, get a microphone, set it up. If you don't have a microphone, a great option is actually this MXL 990. I've had this microphone for years, and it sounds great on most everything I've put it on. I've used this. It's a large diaphragm condenser. I've used this on acoustic. I've used it on piano. I've used it on kick drum. Um, there's a lot of applications that you can get away with something like this. Um, so I would definitely recommend getting some sort of microphone. And you know what, if you're interested in, in looking at this one, it's very affordable. Um, I mean, it fits pretty much any budget. I'll put a link to it down in the description if you wanna check it out. That is an affiliate link, doesn't cost you anything extra, just helps out Floodwater a little bit if you decide to purchase it. And you know what, if you are looking into starting your very first home studio or even kind of expanding what you already have, why don't you head over to floodwaterstudios.com slash home studio grab my free home studio equipment guide pdf download gets sent right to your email inbox take a look at everything there see if there's something that can inspire you towards your music journey we hope you guys have a great day today hook up a microphone record some acoustic guitar and look at the difference you can get as opposed to di guitars for acoustic specifically it's going to change the game for you, and that's what we're trying to do here. Make the best music that we possibly can. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Before then, go record something. See ya.